So the title is Impact of Springboard. So the impact is impact of Springboard quality improvement and leadership training. This is a case study of Nyaururu, Nanyuki, and Kwale Health facilities. And uh, my co-investigators is Dr. Kerry, Dr. Lawrence, and Dr. Sami. And I uh, have no conflict to um, declare. And the background is that uh, Springboard is a quality improvement and leadership training program. And it uses the PDCS cycle that we are very familiar with. The one that is also very popular with KEBS quality uh, ISO certification. And uh, um, so what Springboard does, it develops micro interventions which are bound and intended to change the individual's behavior. And as you change the individual's behavior, you change the group and eventually you change the whole system. So you start small, sometimes you start by piloting with the individual or you can even begin to pilot at a team level and then you move on until the whole system begins to talk and uh, to talk the same language and move in the same direction. Springboard uh, draws a lot from what WHO has done uh, uh, in their quality improvement um, recommendations and uh, Springboard also does formal training on-job training and also does mentorship. The springboard work is also guided by our KQMH under the Ministry of Health and also under Vision 2030. And in case you're not familiar with PDCA, this is what PDCA is all about. It is a cycle that moves from plan, plan up there, where you identify the problems that you're having so you actually walk to the clinical area with the teams, with the owners eh, of that ward or that um, institution. You identify any problems either by what the patients say or what the staff are saying or from the records that are on the ground. And then you plan what you're going to, what you think can work on the ground, of course working with the team and uh, you identify the solution that is likely to work, of course you take into consideration the resources that you have. Then you verify if whatever you've identified can actually work on the ground, and then you go ahead and you implement the solution that has been tested. And, and uh, Springboard combines therefore the formal classroom training, and also they do practical uh, projects and as we con con conclude we will see some of the effects and some of the outcomes with some of the projects that were done. Uh, so you find that when you're doing the classroom work and the practical projects there is experiential learning, there is also small incremental changes in the projects that have been identified and then from those little uh, changes that you have picked, you can implement what is working on the ground and at the end of the day you come up with a change and you can see also observe on the ground uh, the reactions of the people. In other words, at the end of the day you'll have outputs, you'll have outcomes and at the end of the day you'll have an, Im an, an, Im an impact. So. Um, you, you need to go to the ground and work with the people. And uh, hopefully that what you will have identified from the individuals and from the teams will be the picture that is in that system. Because a system is made of those individual microorganisms, the little individuals, uh, you and I, that are in that place. And these were the objectives. We wanted to look at the impact. We wanted to look at the quality improvement projects that are on the ground and also the factors that were um, uh, uh, affecting the, were influencing the success. So the methodology, it was a cross-sectional study. It was done in Nanyuki, Nyahururu, and Kwale, and it was, uh, was census-based. All those who had undergone the quality improvement uh, training, whether at the basic level or at the leadership level, they all participated. And therefore, we had a questionnaire, we had a focus group discussion, 
and we also had the key informant interviews. Pre-testing was done at KNH, and therefore it was ethically covered. Uh, we can see the ethical cover there. Similarly, like the one that I presented in the morning, we adopted the Kirkpatrick evaluation model. It's an easy one to, even for you to apply, you can consider applying the same in your research in the future. And these were the findings. Nanyuki had the most respondents. And the majority, again, I want you to notice the age of the majority of the respondents. And we need to act. When we see these statistics, we don't just want to say there were old people, there were very young people, and leave it at that. And uh, the other findings, you can see the departments that were, were, were represented. Pediatrics, wherever I go, wherever I do a research, pediatric departments seem to respond a lot, eh? and, and well, and obs gyne. And, uh, and I think they're also very well trained. They, they are favored with many, many, um, many case, uh, uh, many curricula. And this, this was the catchment at the bottom. So we had um, training was conducted at the foundational level, and then it was graduated to the advanced level. And you can see not everyone who went through basic went uh, uh, to, the, to the big one. At Nanyuki, we had some uh, projects that were, were running. And you can see one was hand washing. You can see the increase. Then there was labeling or identification of patients. We moved from 20 to 100. Then we had, um, we had time taken to do, to do drug rounds in the pediatric wards where you have very tiny doses. There are things that we did that helped the nurse to move faster so that we moved from four hours to two hours, and that was quite a plus. And you can see what nurses are saying here. They are able to save time to do other things. In Yahururu, we, had, we took the triaging process, and the triaging process improved, so patients were able to navigate the system faster and better. We also reduced the number of injectables in the wards from 90 to 30. And probably we are injecting patients who may not require injectables. We can consider taking small quality improvement pro projects that can help us. We also reduced the number of days of administration of antibiotics. Some people who are uh, uh, prescribing with an open arrow, so a person is, is given um, antibiotics forever. So we reduced that. How did we reduce that? We, 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 we increased the ward rounds from being twice a week to daily because we needed to review those treatments and because we had included from the CEO to the bottom most person in the training, it was, it was easy to marry that into the system. In Yahururu, we reduced the length of time for patients waiting for an available uh, uh, resort. So when a prescription of a resort was, was uh, of an investigation, was written, instead of a person going to line up in the lab, they went first of all to inquire somebody was available to tell whether they were able to do that lab uh, uh, re what investigation or not. We also reduced the starving time for adult surgical patients uh, from, from over 28 hours to four to six hours. And we can do this where we work. And uh, at Nyaururu, we did different things. We, we reduced the waiting time in the physiotherapy department from over one hour to 15 to uh, 15 to 20 minutes. In Yahururu, again, we reduced the con with recontamination to a certain door. There was a certain door where most staff were passing, and we realized there was lots of contamination of that particular door. And there was no way you could open it with your foot. You needed to touch the handle to get in there. So we, we figured out many people's hands were getting contaminated. So we had to modify that door. Small projects with a big impact in your institution. Then we also reduced the fasting time for pediatric surgical patients from 12 hours to six hours. We also reduced cannulation time from 40 minutes to, um, to 10 minutes for the, for the clinical staff. And uh, uh, that can be done where you are. 
Now at Kuala, the main in, in issue they had was communication. And therefore we built teams that were using a structured kind of communication like the SBA. SBA stands for Situation, Background, Assessment and Aris recommendation, structured information, and their team uh, uh, communication improved. We also developed social connections where they developed the WhatsApp forums, and therefore people were able to communicate better. In terms of communication, we also took care of the communication of the client who is coming to the institution. Therefore, we worked on signaging of doors and of corridors so that uh, people would find their way easier. So what are the factors that were influencing the quality improvement uh, success? Some of them we can read together. What was it? Teamwork. The other one was attitude. The other one was leadership. The other one was management resources, the skills, and knowledge. Those were some of the things that we found statistically um, uh, uh, important. So overall training, we can see how satisfied people were, and uh, the fact that they were able to share that information even way after the, the, uh, the project was over. And the conclusion, I think we've already talked about about it even as we are moving. Thank you so much.